Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this talk. Uh, this is uh, accessibility level up, um, how to improve your website accessibility, um, just little tips and tricks here and there. And I am Kyle Bora. Um, next slide, a little bit about me. Uh, I am obviously Kyle Bora. I am a developer on the ITSD team uh, with the Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development, a part of the state of Missouri. Um, I started in April 2021, and I'm glad to be doing what I'm doing. I am blind. Um, I use a screen reader to speak all of the content on web pages and applications to me. I use, a, in conjunction with that, a refreshable Braille display, which is a one-line uh, Braille display uh, output, um, which allows me to better uh, read code and look at the different symbols that you have to um, use when you're programming. Uh, which you'll see a couple of those uh, in a little bit on our HTML content. Um, the screen reader allows me to do my job um, as any other person, uh, and I wouldn't be here without it. Um, Envy Day is also free, and the one I'm going to be using for the demo. Um, there are other screen readers out there, but um, NVDA on, NVDA on Windows is the one I'm highlighting here. Um, so as next slide is a little bit of an outline of what we're going to cover. And we're going to first start out with um, learning about how headings and landmarks as, uh, help navigation on a website. We're going to learn about labels bound to form fields, uh, checkboxes, radio buttons, et cetera. Just any generic um, form element you see on any web page that you encounter. And um, we're going to talk briefly about ARIA and how it can enhance a website um, once you've once you've mastered the basic HTML and when to use it and when not to use it. And we're going to touch briefly on accessibility overlay products. And finally, we're going to I hope to explain um, what now that you've we've gone through all this content, uh, what we can walk away with um, and a couple steps um, moving forward. Um, so next slide, um, I came up with a little quick acronym, NFL, um, mostly because football season is now upon us and um, I'm kind of excited for it. Uh, and so the first thing I mentioned, headings and landmarks fit into a navigation category. That's how you, that's a lot of the ways of how you navigate around the website by headings, by landmarks. And it's big general categories to get you, to get a general layout of the website um, and uh how to find your place. The next category uh, F for form elements is all is all of the form elements I mentioned earlier. Uh, edit edit fields, uh, check boxes, radio buttons, um, drop downs, combo boxes, etc. Um, and the leftovers, I couldn't really come up with a better uh, thing that went with L, but that's that's where Aria and anything um, else that we're going to talk about at the end. Uh, falls under. Um, I just thought it was kind of apt with football starting. And so I, I really liked um, that and uh, hope it helps you to remember some of it. And we'll go to the next slide. Um, a brief disclaimer before we get into the meat of this. I am giving you a thousand foot view of all of these um, brief mini topics. Um, I could speak for an hour plus on just one of these. And so I hope that with 
this talk, I give you, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of links at the end, but I give you um, some information and um, you can take that and do your own research. Um, use some of the words I use to help you get past that technical barrier of, of, I don't even know what I'm looking for. Well, now you know what you're looking for. You're looking for headings. You're looking for ARIA. You're looking for um, um, label tag, stuff like that. Um, now you know what you're looking for. Um, now you can go out and apply this to your own website or um, help someone um, help someone that is running your website start down that path. Um, and so the, again, this is just a thousand foot view. There is way more content that I can go over in an hour in all of this. Um, so I hope uh, that understand that moving forward and that will be it. Next slide. I do have a couple definitions here. You don't have to memorize these. There's not going to be tests at the end. Um, but uh, just as a couple definitions, if you aren't familiar with them, um, WCAG, WCAG is how that's pronounced, um, is the web website accessibility, web, web content accessibility guidelines. Um, and it's at version uh, two right now. Um, and that's basically the end all be all of how to do accessibility on the web. Um, they do have a version three draft out um, that came out back in December last year, but that is years away from being any sort of official standard. Um, so you want to look for WCAG2. Um, and that is basically everything I'm going to be basing all of um, my accessibility tips and code off of is WCAG standards. Um, HTML hypertext markup language is basically everything that the web is 90% of what the web is built off of today. Um, and um, basically what HTML code is in this next line here, they, we have a tag and there's um, it's in those uh, less than and greater than signs uh, where it says tag, that will be where the name of the tag is. Um, so there's heading tags, button tags, um, uh, anchor or A tags where are links. Um, you'll see a lot of input. Um, that's the different form fields. We'll discuss that in a little bit. Um, input tags. Um, and the next um, component of this after that is the attribute. Um, and that usually is some sort of variable equals something. Um, and you'll see those again um, in the demos coming up. Um, but just note, do note that the, they do have attributes and that can change um, when you set attributes and change them, that changes different aspects of the, uh, of the uh, tag you're using. Um, and you can have text in between the um, opening and closing tags. Um, you'll see that a lot in uh, headings and links um and all sorts of stuff um but you want to have the opening and closing tag um with the slash at the end um uh that is most and most important and most critical because the when a website renders your web page sorry when a web browser render renders your web page um it is guessing at what you wanted the web browser is guessing at what you wanted to happen. And so if it can't judge everything perfectly without your opening and closing tags, um, or if you have a typo, you might get some weird stuff. Um, so double check, you make sure you have your opening and closing tags all the time, and you will fix a lot of bugs and a lot of weird happenings. Um, CSS is cascading style sheets. Um, that is basically telling all these tags how to look. Um, you, the HTML tags are the structure, the walls, the, the roof, the doors of your web page. The CSS is the brickwork, the yellow door, the red roof, the how it looks. Um, and you'll want to stick to that convention um, throughout um, creating and writing your website. 
Um, JSS or uh, JS, JS or JavaScript is um, a scripting language that um, you can use on the web to enable dynamic websites, um, user interactivity, um, basically any sort of modern web app, uh, Google Docs, um, your bank app, um, everything will have JavaScript on it. Um, I'm not going to really touch on JavaScript necessarily. Um, I just figured I would put it here um, when in case you're searching and you come across terms, you you might come across JavaScript because JavaScript is very prevalent on the web nowadays. Um, or if it gets mentioned um, later, uh, there is JavaScript. Um, and semantic HTML is basically an idea that you want to use the tag that is proper for that situation. Um, and you'll see that as we go on, you wanna use a heading tag for a heading. You wanna use a button tag for a button. You wanna use an anchor tag, the A, a tag for a link. And you think I might think I'm being dumb that of course you'd wanna use the button tag for a button. Unfortunately, no, I'm not being dumb. People do dumb things and they don't use the proper tags for their proper use cases. And when you start branching out and doing other stuff, not using semantic HTML, that is where and when you can break a lot of accessibility. Um, and so starting off by using a button tag for a button, using a heading for a heading tag for a heading, you get a whole bunch of accessibility right out of the box. And that's half, if not the majority of the battle right there. So um, now that we have those definitions out of the way, let's get into a little bit of our content. Um, and so, as I said before, um, we're gonna start out with navigation. How do I get around your website? When I come to your website, especially as a blind person, um, I have no idea what's on your website. A sighted person can just glance down the page and see, okay, we have this sidebar and this main content with this heading and I have this um, footer at the bottom. They can get an easily quick, a quick overview of your website very quickly. If I'm a blind person, I have no idea what's on your website. Um, and by adding headings and, that, and landmarks, um, it, allows me to get a good understanding of what I have here. How do I digest this? Where do I need to go to find um, the main content of your website? And so the main thing someone who is visiting your website first is going to do as a blind person is hit um, H for headings. Um, as when you're using a screen reader, it is all keyboard driven. Um, and we use different hotkeys to jump around web page. Um, uh, and I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. Um, but headings are the main thing people are going to use first. Um, alternatively to that, and sort of, um, or not alternatively, sort of side alongside that, you can designate on your website landmarks. And what landmarks are, and I'll show this in a second, um, is that um, in HTML5, which is the um, most up-to-date version of HTML, um, there are tags that say, this is my main section of the website. This is my navigation bar with um, my uh, all my uh, links um, that I want people to always refer to. This is my search area. This is my footer at the bottom. And when you use those areas and designate and delineate out those sections, that makes it infinitely easier for a blind person to, again, find the different sections of your website. They don't have to scroll past every single line of this article to get back up to the top of the page and find the search box. Um, and it helps to lay out your website um, consistently and um, logically. Um, and one, one aspect of the WCAG standards that that uh, the WCAG uh, likes you to put on your website at the very top of the website um, is called a skip to content um, link. 
And if you're a sighted person, you may not know what this is because a lot of times it's hidden from visual, um, from people looking at the website. It's only visible to a screen reader, um, which you can do. Um, and basically what that allows for is an easy link to jump to that main section of your website, that um, main uh, landmark um, tagged section. And while that's good, uh, to be honest, a lot of times I find it to be buggy. And that might be a screen reader thing. I'm not sure. That might be a browser thing. I'm not sure. But my personal opinion is that if you have a good website that's logically laid out properly with good delineated, delineated landmarks, good headings that give you information about the different sections that you've just entered, you don't need to you don't need to skip to content. Um, and so that's that's not necessarily valid like violating WCAG. You don't have to have a skip to content, but it but it encourages it. Um, and so that that's just the nature of good website design. If you have a good structure and a good design, um, you don't necessarily need um something like a skip to content link because the blind person can find it. Um, so specifically about headings, um, the next slide is uh, different headings have different levels. And you may not know this intuitively, but you can kind of see it. Um, the top of the websites, the heading level one usually is going to be the biggest. Um, and the article might, the article name, um, article heading might be a level two or level three. Um, it's a little smaller. Different subsections of the article are going to have even smaller titles. There might be a three or four, depending on the website. Um, but the headings will go from level one to level six, and the, the lower numbers, um, one, two, are going to be a bigger type, bigger font, bold font. Um, a level six is going to be a rather small font, um, probably not much bigger than your regular font on the website um, for your normal article. Um, however, this is just the default. Um, any of any things I say as a um, this looks this way, or this this behaves this way. Especially looks, you can customize that um, looks through um, CSS cascading style sheets. If you want to make all your headings green, go for it. I wouldn't recommend it because that's probably not going to look very good. But if you want to make all your headings green, you can, um, and you can customize behavior with JavaScript. Um, and uh, Again, uh, according to the WCAG guidelines, headings should be in sequence. You don't want to skip from a heading level one to heading level six. Um, uh, that violates uh, WCAG, um, and you'll get flagged by an accessibility checker. Um, but like I said before, headings are the main thing um, a blind person is going to use uh, when they go to your website. Um, so the next section is landmarks. Um, and like I said, uh, the landmarks are, uh, sections of your website that will delineate the, uh, main, there's five, five landmark tags, main nav for a uh, navigation search for a search area footer for a footer tag at the footer area at the bottom. Um, and I think there's a, a header or heading tag. Um, I always get confused with that because, as I said before, there are uh, headings as as part as aspects tags of a web page. And there's a header tag and there's a header landmark tag. Um, so it, they are kind of close. Um, but the the it's a banner tag. That's what it is, banner tag. And that, that's like for your logo and your um, um, top part of the page. Um, you might have your navigation or your search in the banner um, at the top of your page. But um, using that uh, landmarks, the, using those landmarks are uh, uh, crucial to get around the web page. Um, so form elements are the next. And um, I don't know about the different websites that everyone um, does, but especially for me um, and the Department of Higher Education, we have a lot of forms on our page that we want um, students to fill out for funding. 
And so we have a lot of form elements. Most of our pages are applications people to fill out and there's forms, form elements, um, edit fields, um, combo boxes, radio buttons, um, all of the above. Um, and uh, all of them need to be accessible, obviously. Um, and I did include buttons and links in these form elements. Um, they're not, I mean, buttons are form elements. Links are technically not form elements, um, but I didn't really have a good place to put them. Um, and it's still all sort of um, the same sort of idea and linked together. Um, and uh, you will see that in a second. So form elements and how to do them right. So uh, one of the tags in HTML is the label tag. And that um, basically will take um, a bit of text. And that is going to be the label of whatever you want the person to type into the website. You've seen that before. When you're filling out to sign up on a website, it'll say email, name, last name, um, birth date, all those uh, words next to those text fields and next to those um, form elements are labels. And so that's what that's what that person is going to see. Um, and specifically around text fields, um, the uh, tag you want to use for a text field is an input tag. Um, and the uh, attribute you want to set that the attribute of type you want to set that to text. Um, and when you you can either take that label and wrap with of name and you want to wrap that around put that label tag around the input field um or alternatively they can be separate but when you do that you need to give the input tag and use the attribute of id and give it a name, give it a distinct name, something that can specifically refer to that edit field specifically. And so if it's like a name field, um, you'll want to use uh, maybe name, first name or last name, depending on whatever it is. Um, and then to tell that that label goes with that um, edit field, in the label um, tag, there is an attribute called for, F-O-R, and you want to give, set that equal to that ID of that input. So the first name label goes with the first name edit field, and the last name label goes with the last name edit field. And when those two are separate, that's, and you don't use the ID, and the four attribute and link them together, that's when a lot of accessibility goes wrong. And you will see that in the demo. Um, and this sort of idea of giving the input control um, or the form element the an ID and using that um, ID at the four attribute um, for the label, is basically the idea for all of these form elements. Again, you can also wrap um, the label around the form element, um, and that sort of gets default accessibility um, because they are they are already linked. Um, however, a lot of people don't do that um, because if if they're separate, then you can style it style the label separately with with CSS. Um, you can, then you can style the input field separately from the label. And there, there, I mean, technically there are ways to do it. If you don't, if you wrap them, it's more complicated with CSS, but um, a lot of people do it separately. 90 plus percent of the time it's done separately. Um, so selects combo boxes and dropdowns. Um, next slide, the, uh, say, again, same idea. Uh, select um, is the uh, tag name uh, for, uh, combo boxes and drop downs, um, same sort of thing, just different styling um, based off the browser and the operating system. Um, you want to use a select tag um, and in each of the options you want to pick from, you want to use the option tag. Um, 
and you want to stick all of your option tags in a select tag. Otherwise, um, it won't be in the combo box. And again, I the same idea, wrap the select tag with a label tag based off of whatever you want the name to be. Or you can give the select tag an ID and make sure you have that ID set to the for attribute of the label. Um, and it's the same, same idea with the text fields. If it's wrapped, it'll, it'll have the name and it'll be accessible. If you don't use the ID um, of the select with the for label of the for attribute of the label, um, it won't be labeled properly. Um, moving on to buttons and links. Um, uh, again, I just have a note here as a reminder to make sure and use proper semantic HTML. A button is a button, a link is a link. Um, make sure and use helpful, sensible names. Um, you can use uh, images, but make sure you do give it some sort of um, a name for a screen reader to output to a screen for a screen reader to output to a blind person. Um, left and right arrow looky things don't really read too well with a screen reader. You can sometimes guess or plus button to make the add button. Um, usually it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's helpful if you could just hit add or um, more or back or forward or whatever the symbols are. Um, and uh, the um, the the name of the button or link um, will is the content between uh, the tags, the opening, closing button, or a anchor tags, which are links. And I'll I'll show you that. Um, right now we're gonna do our demo. Um, so let me share. Screen. And Kyle, can you explain a little bit of the device that you use to navigate to get to a website? What, what's happening while you're doing that? Yes. Um, so I have, like I said, I have a screen reader. Um, I'm going to switch this right now. Settings, settings window, search box. Oh. List, vision, mouse pointer not select, text cursor not selected, 307 level 2. NVDA update dialog, NVDA version, download update, remind me later button, I'll zoom start screen. Close button. This will stop other screen sharing, meeting controls row 1 column, meeting controls window. Start, this will stop other screen sharing, meeting controls row 1 column, PowerPoint slideshow, let's talk ICTX, this meeting is being recorded by the host or a participant, information technology services, information technology, run dot D-O-U-F-E-F-T-S, tech, desktop list, end dot E-A-A, accessibility level up, demo 2 of 90, items view list. Give me one second. I'm trying to slow the speech down. Not sure why it's not letting me slow it down. In excess. NVDA menu. Settings. S. NVDA speech 2 of 13. Braille 3 of speech. Speech property. Change. Voice. Combo. Rate. Slider. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 23. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 9, 8, 7. Accessible. Okay. Volume. Inaccessible. Um, so the volume screen level, reader, I am vol volume level 87. Ac inaccessible. The screen reader I'm using, like I said, is NVDA. Volume level, volume level. saying that? Accessible. And, um, it, like I said, it outputs everything on the screen to, um, speech, um, or at the same time, Braille. Um, and so anything I interact with um, on the web in apps, mostly if it's accessible, obviously, if it's accessible on the web too, um, gets output through that speech and I'm able to access um, any content. Um, it uh, And so this um, page I've coded up a little bit Visited here, link. Um, Visited link. Is a little demo page. Um, access 
and uh it's not it doesn't look very good i didn't put any uh styling on it but it it illustrates the point um and so um uh, i am first thing i'm going to do is hit h for headings no next heading and i said no next heading so there's no headings on this page um i can hit uh d for landmarks no next landmark there's no landmarks um and so there's uh, two ways I can proceed here from now. I can just start hitting the down arrow, or I can hit tab. A down arrow will, is just like scrolling the web page. I'll go through everything. Um, but since I know I'm looking for some sort of form on this page, um, tab will cycle through any links, buttons, form elements, stuff, stuff like that. Um, and it will skip over text. Um, so if it's an article, you probably don't want to you don't want to be hitting tab. I'd hit down arrow for that. Um, but since it's a form, I'm gonna hit tab. Edit blank. And it that's it, edit blank. Um, it did play a sound. The sound is because it went to the text field and that's automatically entering um forms mode. Um, so I can type. Yes. So I'm typing. E the T unselected. Um but I don't know what text field that is because it didn't have a label. Edit has auto complete blank. Another text field without a label. I hit tab. Checkbox not checked. Some sort of checkbox that's unchecked, but I don't know what it is. Um, now, if I'm in this situation, you can find out um, what these what these things are, but you have to move focus away from that edit controls that that control. So I'm on this checkbox. I can hit up arrow. A simple personal info form. In a simple per first name. Well, for some reason it jumped me back. My but favorite number is seven. My first a simple person inaccessible for a in visited link home. In a, a first name. Edit last name. Edit sub menu has auto complete. I my favorite number is for um and use screen layout off. First, edit. Last, edit sub menu. I agree to s check. So I'm on this checkbox, and I don't know what it is, but if I hit up arrow. I agree to something or other. It's some sort of agreement. I <laughs> Again, demo page. I agree to something or other. Well, if I hit tab, and I'm on that, uh, and if I, and I'm on that checkbox, I'm able to, uh, I, sh I should be able to know what that checkbox is just by tabbing to it. When you link that label to an edit field or a checkbox or a radio button, uh, then when you by hitting tab and going to it, then you automatically know what it is uh, for a screen reader. And there's one more control on this page. Checkbox not check. Radio button check two of two. A radio button. Um, but again, the labels aren't there. I can go away from the uh, the controls and figure out what the label is. 42. Radio button not checked. 7. My favorite number is... My favorite number. 7. 7. Radio button not checked. I could check the box. 42. 42. Radio checked. Check that box. But that's a lot of navigation to try and just find out the labels. Button. Um, and... Visited link pro button. Dummy button. Uh, there is a button um, down here. Uh, doesn't really do much. Visit and you might also see visited link privacy, privacy policy. policy down here at the bottom. Visited link and a visited home link. But home link up here at the top of the page. Um, well, those are those are part parts of the page too. They're not rendered with um, landmarks, as I'll show you in a second. Um, uh, which as they would be on an accessible page. Um, but those are there and those are be harder to find if I was some 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 place down in the document and I was like oh I want to go to the top now and uh pick some other page maybe I want to go back home um well putting that in a landmark making it easy able to landmark section of putting that it was easy putting that is an easy to find place is uh is good um so Get I'm gonna look ac access um we're going to open up the accessible page now. Accessibility banner land and visit. So 
as I open this up, um, the I I cut I cut it off. Um, but the first thing it was going to say is banner landmark, and that's that's the main um, header part of this section where that home link is. Um, and so I can navigate by uh, landmarks. No pre banner landmark home visited link. Banner landmark home. Form a simple personal info form heading level two. Um, well, it's, it's saying that's in a form um, because that's where all these form elements are. They're in a form tag, um, but that's the next main landmark. Um, the main part of the website. Content info landmark privacy policy visited link. Content info landmark. That's basically a footer landmark. Um, bottom of the page privacy policy. That's a good thing to have down there. So now I can find any parts of this website I can I will ever want to very easily. Um, no navigating through hundreds of lines of a long website. This this up this page isn't long, but I I bet a lot of pages are pretty long and that's a pretty hard navigation. So let's go back to the top. Bad. Um, and I'm gonna go by headings now. Accessible form heading level one. This is an accessible form. Form a simple personal info form heading level two. A personal info simple form. And it also said heading level one was the first one. Banner landmark accessible form heading level heading one. Level one. Next land. Form a simple personal info form heading level two. Heading level two. Um, and now when I'm here on this form, I can hit tab. A simple personal info form form landmark, first name, edit blank. Well, it read the landmark again and the label for that, um, but it said first name. Last name, edit has autocomplete blank. Went to the next um, form field, hit tab, and it said uh, last name. I agree to something or other checkbox not checked. I agree to something or other checkbox. My favorite number is grouping. 42 radio button check two of two and uh, my favorite number and you could pick one 42 you you get all the information without having to move away from the controls and that's what you get with um the binding those um, input labels with the id to the label uh tag with um through the four attribute and i'll, I'll give you uh show the code here in a second um and i will be including all this um, the PowerPoint and the HTML pages with the sample code um, for anyone to have. Um, if you want to uh, view that later, that's perfectly okay. 238. Um, and so now that's all this is infinitely easier to navigate. Every time I go to a control without having to move away from the control, I get that um, label automatically read out to me. And so I know that it's a first name field. I know it's a last name field. I know what I need to type in um, without having to move away from the control. And that's that's 90% of the website websites um, out there. Yeah, there are um, articles and stuff, but you could, you can just read those um, perfectly fine a lot of, a lot of percent of the time. Um, but where it gets tricky are these form elements that need to be properly written. Um, and that can go wrong. Um, and so let me Ac bring up Vol accessible uh, this volume Firefox at Google in Microsoft Notepad plus accessible 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 less doc type eight. Um, so this is the uh, uh, HTML um, code here. Um, there's uh, just wanted to show this to you. Less header, um, le less br, le less slash header greater blank less for less field and, set role e um le blank less label for equals first name greater first name so less slash so specifically with this these um first name and last name um tags like I said there's the label separate from the Less input. input type equals text ID equals first name. And you can see the the ID equals first name. And I use that ID Less in the label on the for attribute. And if I didn't do that, um, we would get the situation um, that we had on that inaccessible initial page where I didn't know what label, I didn't know what the text field was labeled. I, the, I didn't know what to put into it. And I had to go find out that information for myself. Um, and again, uh, I'm not going to 
uh, dwell too much on this, um, but all the code is there for you. I have some of them, uh, some of the separate fields with um, linked to your ID. I have a couple and I have one with um, the label wrapped around the form element. Um, and uh, I think that's it for the demo. Um, if you want to pick up the share and we'll go on to the last section um, we want to go over, Eileen. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Sure. On which slide do you want me to? Be uh, on? The leftovers. Um, I don't remember what number that is. Okay. I may need to find that. Let me bring up my screen reader again. I found it. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, 14. Um, so just as a, a quick note, um, if you do have any images on your website, um, you will want to have an alt tag um, on that and give a brief description about what that image is. Um, and we did do a talk about alt text all last month with myself. Um, so go back and uh, view that if you want to know more information. Um, as a brief visual note, you will want to check color contrast. It is a part of WCAG, um, kind of out of the scope of this talk, but I did want to mention it. Um, and where semantic HTML fails, you want to use ARIA. Um, and a lot of times you want to stick with the proper tags first but where you haven't because you need to, or where a website was coded improperly, um, that is where you want to, if you, and if you can't change the website because of time constraints, uh, red tape, whatever issues are that you can't just completely rewrite this website. Um, if something is already existing and you want to fix a lot of the accessibility, ARIA will help you do that. It's not a permanent solution. And I would say stick with semantic HTML, proper HTML before you go to ARIA. You'll want to put ARIA on everything. Um, but um, it is a tool and you got to know when to use it. Um, so what is ARIA? Accessible, uh, rich internet applications. Um, and it's basically um, extra tags that you can add to your HTML to prevent to present them to screen readers. Um, and as I said before, when semantic HTML is enough, when when you're doing an application uh, like Google Docs, um, when you need um, when you have something more than than the basic HTML um, doesn't offer or you have a lot of customizations you want to make, um, that is where ARIA can come into a lot of uh, use, usefulness. Um, again, when you're updating a website that lacks accessibility and you can't change everything, you can't rewrite it, um, adding ARIA will help. Um, and also specifically when you need to provide rich, dynamic um, information to a screen reader, um, um, something like I said, Google Docs, when, you, when you're hitting save and there's a lot of um, messages popping up when you need to give specific um, feedback to a, a screen reader user um, that their document's been saved, that someone else has started editing the document, that your downloads complete, that your uh, transaction is processing and to please wait, or the page is loading and you specifically want to say that, or it's refreshing because it's some sort of dynamic JavaScript page. Um, that's exactly when you want to use ARIA. Give, give the screen reader per um, user better feedback. They may not be able to see the little spinner on the page, um, but if you give them feedback of that, of loading, um, whatever, um, that is where ARIA can really shine. Um, and I did put some a little bit of ARIA on that page. Um, uh, basically, uh, the um, radio button, um, I wrapped it in a div tag. A div tag is basically a blank container. You can put anything in a div. 
and a div can go in anything. And um, therefore, I had to give it, give that radio button the attribute role equals radio button. And a lot of times when people do custom stuff, they put divs on everything. Everything is a div. They just use div for everything. And a screener doesn't know what to do with that. But if you're using a div and it's supposed to be a button, you can give role equals button. And all of a sudden, yes, it's a div in the code, but a screen reader sees that as a button. And so that's how you fix a lot of accessibility. It doesn't matter what the tag is. Usually it's div, but um, uh, but if you use role equals whatever you want the role to be, then that tag takes over a button, a link, a form field. That's how to add a lot of accessibility. Um, again, very, very deep topic, very, very lots of good information here. Um, some links in the uh, resources about ARIA. Um, if you want to know more information, um, just a brief uh, a summary here and of some aspects of what it can do and how it can enhance um, a website. Um, so accessibility overlays real quick. Um, I'm not going to name any products, um, but accessibility overlays basically advertise um, use one line of JavaScript, import our JavaScript, and we'll make your website accessible and you won't get accessibility lawsuits, 508 compliance lawsuits, uh, ADA violation lawsuits. Um, 90 plus percent of the time, they break websites. Um, they don't usually don't enhance um, or make a website more accessible. Um, yes, ADA lawsuits are a thing, and there have been a couple uh, big ones out there, notable, notably most recently Domino's. I would much rather see a team properly learn how to use HTML, JavaScript, CSS uh, to properly make a website accessible than to pass it off on some third-party component that probably will break your website. I don't, we, as blind people, we don't necessarily care how compliance, what badge level compliance of accessibility you are. We just want it to be accessible. And um, they, like I said, mostly break your website, unfortunately. And again, not going to name any names. If you search for um, 508 compliance, um, accessibility overlays, um, all that sort of keywords, you will find them. Um, and I would not touch them at all. Um, and a lot of, again, a lot of their, um, advertising is, um, trying to scare you into thinking your website's horrible and that you're going to get attacked all the way, all the time with ADA, um, ADA, uh, accessibility violation lawsuits. Um, hopefully you don't. Um, but they do happen from time to time. Um, but, uh, it is much better to, uh, have a working website that you've done yourself or a team has done, um, and not relying on, uh, questionable third-party solutions. Um, and so the flip side of that accessibility checkers are great tools that do no modification to your website. And we'll statically, the, there are dynamic ones, but most of them statically analyze your website and will report WCAG accessibility violations. Um, these are ranked um, on this um, based off of my recommendations. Um, Axe Dev Tools is a little bit more modern, understands HTML5 a little bit better. Um, Wave, um, has been around for many years, um, is still a very good um, accessibility checker, um, kind of is a little bit antiquated in some of its rules, um, will still pass um, WCAG um, acceptance criteria and such, um, but it uh, it is not quite as aware of the more modern HTML5 stuff than uh, Axe Dev Tools are. Um, and there is a Chrome accessibility checker built into Chrome. It is better than nothing. It is a good place to start. 
Um, but I would definitely recommend getting a either Wave or X Dev Tools. Both of them are free or have some sort of free component. Um, they do have paid components, obviously. Um, specifically, X Dev Tools has a professional, pro, and enterprise license, um, which integrates a lot of stuff for teams um, and uh, development shops. If you um, want to integrate X Dev Tools into your, your um, CDIC pipelines, um, that that is exactly where you want to be. And it and the enterprise also checks mobile websites, Android and or sorry, mobile applications and websites as well, but mobile applications, iOS and Android. Um, so that um, is just a little plug for them. They don't pay me. Uh, this is not an advertisement, just my recommendations. Um, I will have links to all three of those in the resources. Um, so uh, wrapping up, where do you go from here? Um, this is a lot of information and I went through it probably very quickly. Um, and so again, this is the 10% view. There is a 90 plus percent, maybe more under the, under the surface here that you can dive in and learn more about. Um, if you're a dev, this is a great starting place to look at your website, make sure all of your um, uh, pages are in compliance, maybe run a checker on your website, um, start fixing some things that might come up because I guarantee you they're probably are a good handful of things that are coming up. Um, if you're a non-developer, ask questions above who's ever in charge of your website, who's ever in charge of your um, development team. Um, are you thinking about 508 accessibility compliance? Uh, uh, are you working on that? Is that a thing you're thinking about? Um, so just start asking these questions. Um, and if they can't come up with answers, that's not a good thing. Hopefully they're thinking about it and hopefully they've been working on it. And then for everyone, um, run an ex even if you're not a developer, run, run the checker on your website, run a checker on any website you want to and see how, see how they, um, uh, see how they pass, see how, um, their website accessibility is, um, and also get feedback from users on your website, get um, if you're able to find find a user of your website that is using some sort of assist, assistive technology, a screen reader, a magnifier, um, maybe they uh, have vision, but they're but they can't use a mouse, so they're only a keyboard user. Um, get some direct feedback on how they use this website. Does is it meeting their accessibility needs? Is there any improvements they would recommend? Um, and test the website with your with a screen or assistive technology yourself. Now, this is quite a topic and quite daunting, especially if you've never used a screen reader. Um, I will put a brief plug in that we are doing a, a talk next month about testing your um, site with a screen reader, uh, October 24th. Um, and uh, but it is a very useful tool. Um, to you won't be able it you might you get a much better grasp of the challenges and interesting scenario you are with a screen reader than if you're just able to see the screen with a mouse and see the screen and use the mouse excuse me um and um so uh, i think that's about it i do have a bunch of resources um uh, if people want to learn more information um, and I will definitely answer any questions anyone might have. Um, I hope I didn't overwhelm people, but it is a lot of information. Um, there's plenty more to learn out there. 